Yo, this is the time of place, Pokemon Violet End. We continue with our objectives. We are not going to go back to school yet. We have more stuff to do. We have two more of the Treasure Ruin as well as another Team Star Leader to fight. And speaking of Treasure Ruin, since we have more of those left, we need to do that. So, today is Treasure Ruin number three, which is in this location up here, the Ground Blight Shrine. So, hopefully I won't be fumbling around with this with the stakes this time around, because I think I have a clue where they are. One of them I know is underground, sort of, and the rest are above the ground, so it shouldn't be too hard. Now, um, the first ones should be close by. I think there are two right nearby here. So let's go for it right away. Alright, so, there should be one around here, and then one about here, and I wonder which one of them will be on the ground. I think the ones here is the one that is beneath, because this cave, or, oh, oh speaking of which, ah, nice start. It was not this one. Heat wave, a very powerful special attack, but it has very low accuracy, but it's very useful if it hits. So these sticks here are yellow, so we have seen purple, orange, and now yellow. Let's take away this stake right now. So that's a great start. We sp I think it's been like five minutes on the first stake, and now we've been one minute in where we found the first one, and the next one is close by. I think this one is the one that is beneath the ground, somewhere around here. One of those pillars, I think, that is um, shown near the hole up to the skies. Oh boy, that's a scary Pokemon. That's a Garchomp. Yeah, Cynthia, don't send your Pokemon up to her. Speaking of uh, scary things, there is the stake. That's the second one already. And this one is much easier, just because it doesn't beneath in the cave. There's stake number two. These are the ones that are south of the river. Or I technically know there's one more, but that one is far away from here. The rest are around the lake. The big lake where we fought the false Dragon Titan Tatsugiri. Dragon Pulse is always a good move. It's one of the more reliable special attack dragon moves in the game. It's pretty powerful. It's basically like the Dragon Claw for special attacks. Is useful. The one screaming help, not gonna help. That's just a help. The help! Fight me! Battle me! No, I don't have time. Not today. So the next one should be around here. It's kind of far away from a, from a spot. We need to travel a bit. Let's go to Medley. And then head northeast towards Glacida Mountain, and we should be able to fight it. Just go up to the mountain, and then we should heat the road and go a bit more northwest. Or northeast, even. Here's the West Province, it's Glacida Mountain. Where we are we now? Oh yeah, it's much, much further north. We are not even close. So yeah, this lake is really nice. I really wish they did more with this lake, though. In my opinion, there should have been a town in the, in the northwest region, especially in that area and in, in the near the shrine, because it has a bit of this autumn feeling, and I, I like the colors of it. I feel like autumn is an underrated season when it comes to... Uh, like spring, summer, autumn, or fall if you want to call it American style, and winter. I really like fall because, yeah, it's kind of depressing because after fall it's winter. And where I live in Norway, it gets very dark in the winter because the sunlight just changes so much. Like, when, with the darkest day in Norway, it's around, in, in Oslo region, it's around six hours sunlight. And if you live north, uh, north Norway, you'd be like, six hours sunlight, huh? 
They don't even have sunlight for a month or two. So they're pretty depressed. Alright, so this should be one. Here ish. Up here, maybe? Oh, there it is. So that's stake number three. This is the only one that we haven't gotten so far that's, that's south of the river that splits the lake. The reason why I say south of the river is because the level of the Pokemon goes up a lot from here on out. Alright, so. For the next stick, we have to go to the all the way to the other way. It's gonna be around here. So let's fly to the watchtower again. And let's go for that one. So let's see, that's to the east. Oh, that's the raptor. Good thing I didn't flew into it, because uh that would be kind of funny. It kind of reminds me, this was a gimmick in Generation 6 where they had these aerial battles, which were pretty funny. Like the only Pokemon you could use were Pokemon that, knew f that could fly or could know the move fly or something. It was very gimmicky because it was so restricted. I think it's understandable why they never came back after Generation 6, but I think it's one of those gimmicky uh, battle styles that people have forgotten about. That Gen 6 had these aerial battles, which was funny, but it was too restrictive, so it will never be used again. But it'd be funny if they were used in open world games like these, so like you fly on your on your Pokemon, and then you can have battles in the air as well. Maybe even get a boost if you are in the air. That could be working, that could be funny. So let's see. It should be on the very... There it is. You see the stake. It's on the very point of the landmass here before we go into the islands northwards. So this is stake number four. So we're halfway through already. That's nice. We pull out the stake. So that's number four. Let's bring this item here. What's this? Ah, more money and nuggets. You can never go wrong with nuggets. Even though I find it's not that hard to get money in this game if you do max uh, terror raid battles. Because they often give a lot of good items. Especially items that can be sold for a lot of money. Both of these that are just only for money. And items that also are good for other stuff too. So You should always look out for those. Um... Often there's sometimes there are these blister raids, there also are these other types of raids which are gimmicky, like they're not really meant to be challenging, they just give a lot of items. The, from what I remember, the love is in the air, or like the, the Valentine, oh wow, that Valusa is scary. That's why I like to jump in the air, because some of these Pokemon are very aggressive. Like they will try to go for you, like eat you alive. Anyways, uh, the Valentine's Day thing with Love Disc, I think it also was very heavy on the EXP candle. That's just like Blissey. So. Let's see which island are we now? We're now on the south one. That is not the right one. We're supposed to go next one. Should be up here. Here should be another of these. There's the stake. Just gonna grab this item first. Also Tatsugiri's here, Dragon Terror Shards, which is nice. It's only one we get from here though, but again, as I mentioned in one of the other episodes, don't worry. In the Indigo Disc DLC, it will be a new era where we can also go around and, and explore, and there's going to be a lot of these random items. A lot of them are Terror Shards, and they give multiple per pickup, so they are very good. That was stake number five. The next one is on the big island just up here. This is where we found uh, Tatsugiri and fought him on the northern edge here. And uh, Dondozo, oh wow, that Valusa is aggressive. And the Dondozo, which was we thought was a titan, but that was just like the underling. The little Tatsugiri was the master. And there's the stake. So far, so good. That's the sixth one.
So the next two stakes are a bit far farther away from here, but that is fine. So the next stake is directly north of here. It's on the mainland, though, so, or not on these islands. We have to go all the way up to the to the side here. We're gonna go up to the snowy area, actually. That's where the seventh stake is located, or at least the seventh stake for me. You can take the stakes in any order you want, as long as you just pick up all eight of them. You get to fight the legendary Pokémon. I'm glad Miraidon and Karai doesn't have stamina bars here in this game when they are climbing. That would be kind of funny. But I imagine if they're going to give this kind of attribute to a Legends game again, I could see this having a stamina bar where you have to upgrade your Pokemon or like maybe have a saddle or something to increase stamina or reduce pressure from the weight of the trainer. Because I don't think you can have the trainer f uh, have an eating disorder to reduce weight. That would be kind of funny, but at the same time problematic if you want to. Have the Pokemon have higher stamina. So it should be around in the north area here, I think. Yeah, there it is. So, yeah, nice. Alright, so that's the seventh one. We only have one more left. And the last one is... Um, on the other side. Or never mind! We don't even need to find it! We probably have picked it up. We must have picked it up because we already spawned right now the uh, shrine. But I will show you regardless though because we are so ahead of time. So no need to worry about that. We only are at around 12 minutes I think into today. So we have a lot of time left. Even though I want to try to be at around 20 minutes and not above it. But yeah, it's a bit hard to do all the sticks and get uh, the legendary Pokemon all that in that short time. Anyway, um, what I was saying earlier is that this player's here is so beautiful. It has these autumn colors with the orange and all that. And I really think it's beautiful. I really wish it was like a town here or a settlement here. Even though this place is supposed to be like maybe more desolate and wild. But still, it should be in the middle of a town here. I wouldn't even mind if they had a gym here. Have the... Maybe have Grusha's gym be at Mountain and Weber, and maybe have Rhyme to have a, a town here and have that place to be the sixth gym. I would not mind that. Because it's a bit weird that the to those two gyms are so close to each other, and then. And then you don't have anything up here. So I think Game Freak should have designed a town here, have the sixth gym be here, and then move Grusha to Mountain and and have that be uh, his place. So here we have these ruins near the border to the river below. The stake, as far as I remember, should be up here. I think it's around here. Maybe one of these platforms platform is. Basically around this rock here. Should be around where I am right now. This area here, this is where the 8th stake was. I must have picked it up when we when did the exploration here before we went to the Pokemon League or something. So, this is where the supposed 8th eighth, the eighth, um, stake is. You just pick up there and then the shrine boss will spawn. Oh, yeah, third one. So, what have we faced so far? We faced against Wu Qin, who is the grass and dark duel type, and we faced against Qin Pao, the mighty. Sabertooth Cat, dual type Dark and Ice. And we have two more types, and remember what I said about them being specialized in a type or a stat? So Wu Qin is a specialized in special defense, and Qin Pao is specialized in attack. That means the rest, the other two are specialized in, in defense and special attack. And next one is defense. This is the tanky one. And the last one will be the the wizard one, I would like to call it the special attacker. Let's see. Yeah, the shrine is directly up here. It's basically up in this up in this corner here. At least the shrine is here, so at least it has something, but again, I really wish they had a town here. Would have been made much more sense. 
here is the shrine. Alright, so do we have the Pokemon ready for this though? Um... Need to figure out how to deal with it without killing it. I guess maybe Garganical could do well, maybe? I'll try Garganical. Hopefully it won't KO. In worst case, we can just do it again. I'll just re-edit re the video if we KO, so... I don't have to worry about that too much. Because you can... You can fight the legendary Pokémon as many times as you want, but it will disappear as soon as you have captured it. Alright, let's go! Who is the third treasure of Ruin? What Pokémon is it? What typing is it? It's a defense-oriented uh, Pokémon, but what is it? The first was Snail, the second one was a Sabertooth Cat. And the third one... ...is... ...this thing. Oh boy. This is Tinglu. He is the Vessel of Ruin. So he reduces the attack of everyone. So he, again, he is a physical, he's a physical defense tank. So he's a very tanky one. He's dual type Rock and Dark. Yeah, all of the four Treasure Ruins are Dark types and they have a different type. This is the Rock type. So the Rock and Dark means it has a four time weakness to fighting. Be warned, just like Chin Pao. It's also weak to ground, and I think that's going to do some damage without killing it, I think. Let's try it. Never mind, didn't do that either. Hold on! Is he...? No, hold on, he's not rocking. He's not rock. He's ground, I think. He's ground. Yeah, he's a ground type. Yeah, that's true. It's ground. Uh, my bad. I thought it was a rock. I thought it was rock type. No, of course not. That'd be kind of weird. But yeah, he's a dual type, ground and dark. Yeah, that makes more sense. Because doesn't really look like he's uh, that ground. It doesn't really look like he's that sort of like bulky in it as a as a. Rock type. So that was my bad. My bad. I just forgot. I mixed him with Tyranitar. But yeah, he's a dual type ground and dark. This is kind of bad for capturing him though with Nussle because he's immune to. Um, this Pokemon is immune to paralyze, so I can't paral. I can't use Nussle on him because he's, he's immune to it. I mean, not immune to Paralyze, but he's immune to Electric Attack, so I can't use Nussle. So that's a bit bad, so I guess we have to recapture him the other ways. So have to try like this one, then. If you have Pokémon with Sleep, you can do that. We just want to kick up pretty quickly, so I guess this will be a long battle. Good thing we took the stakes quickly now. Tommy Tantrum is going to knock us out. No, nothing we can do about that. Use Bramble Gaston, I guess. You know, Bramble Gaston is a bit of a. He's not very really good for this because he's a bit squishy, but he's resistant to ground at least, as a grass type. I don't think Pokemon I can use to has some moves that can. I don't think we can. Because I can't use Nussle, which was sort of like the reason I brought him for this, but. Go for more Ultra Ball stuff. It's gonna be tough to capture him without using Paralyze. Rumination reduces your max health by half, or well, your current health by half. That's more correct. Yeah, he hasn't even budged once. Rumination again. Now I'm at one fourth HP.
Not even a single bulge this one. This one's gonna be tough. Roach up. Oh, that's super effective. Because it's a dark move. Of course it's a dark move because it's a dark dual type as well, so. In worst case, I could of course bring out I could learn Yawn, for example, on Cloud Sire, that could work. Then I have to KO him and do him again though, but uh Let's keep trying a bit more. At least we get the time bolts going, because time bolts are better. One, two. Ah! Oh! It's just like I thought maybe we we're gonna get somewhere, but no. So Azumarill takes a little damage from dark types because fairy types are resistant to dark, so that's good. One, two, and another two. Maybe it's trying a bit fatigued right now. Rock slide. Some damage, but he's not a rock type, as we now have learned. So he doesn't have bonus damage for rock moves. Pokemon games do really want to have Pokemon use same type attack moves for the stab bonus or the same type attack bonus, as it's called. One, two, another two. Throw chop doesn't really do much. One, two, another two. This Pokemon either has one or it skips uh, like a zero or just skips a two. So one more Ultra Ball and starts doing Tyrant Balls. Throw up again. Doesn't really do much. Let's go for Tyrant Balls. They should be more effective now. One, two. Mm -hmm. First one's a two, that's a I think is. Ow! Azumarill is out. That's too bad. Um because the remaining Pokemon of mine are all weak to ground. So that's gonna be a problem. Uh, I guess we have no choice, just have to keep on going. Can I could, of course, just kill it and try again. And get in. Uh, I think I have Yawn on Cloud I can learn it. That's a one, that's a first one at least, that's a uh, progress. Rock Slide, also super effective. Because Fire are also weak to Rock as well as Ground. That's an instant kick out. Rock slide again. So it's rock, ground, dark, and the nation that's it moveset. One, two, three, and Yay! We didn't need to do it again! Thank thankfully. Time ball are great. There we go. We got Tinglu. That's the third of the treasure of ruin. This is the vessel of ruin. Look at the size of him though. 1542.6 pounds. That's a heavy Pokemon. There's cars that aren't as heavy as this one. Jeez. It looks like an elk or something. So, anyways, Tinglu, the ruinous Pokemon. Dark and ground. It slowly brings exceedingly heavy head down upon the ground, splitting the earth open with huge fissures that run over 160 feet deep. See, this is defensive Pokemon. He's the tank one. Problem. Some people maybe say that maybe he might also be one of the worst ones. I think it's better than Wuchin because Wuchin's uh, typing is just bad, dark and uh, grass. But eh, the next one's gonna be better though. So that is for today. That was the third of the Treasure Ruin. Next time we're gonna do other objectives because we have other objectives to do as well before we head. Back to school and do the other stuff too. And we're gonna do that next time. Like, comment, and subscribe. Follow me on social media. That's gonna be for now. See you next time as my journey in Pokemon Violet continues.